How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another problem and today we're going over a Google problem called House Robber. So today guys our problem is from Google and it's called House Robber. Our problem description says you are a professional robber planning to rob houses along the street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed and the only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security systems connected and it will automatically contact police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. So given a list of non-negative integers representing the amount of money in each house, determine the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police. So in example one, if we're given one, two, three, one, which again is how many, or sorry, how much money each of these houses have, so house one is $1, House two has two dollars, house three has three dollars, and house four has one dollar. We would return four because we can rob house one for one dollar, and then rob house three for three dollars. So the total amount that we can rob is four. And here's another example if you guys want to kind of go through it and look over it, but we're going to start jumping right into the solution. So the idea here, guys, is that we want to rob these houses, but our only constraint is we can't rob any two adjacent houses. So what we really need to do is we need to calculate the maximum amount of money that we can rob up to any point. And so eventually, if we can somehow propagate the maximum amount of money to rob at the ith house, and our i eventually becomes the last house, then we will actually know the maximum amount of money we can rob without setting off these alarm systems, right? Or contacting or alerting the police. So I think a good way to think about this is just, okay, well, how much money can we make if we rob zero houses? And obviously the answer is zero, right? And so we can kind of slowly build towards, okay, how much money can we make from zero houses? How much money can we make from one house, from two houses, from five, from 10, from 30? And eventually that will give us from N houses, right? So like we said, the amount of money we can make from zero houses is zero dollars. Now, what if we had one house, right? Well, that's pretty easy. We just robbed the house and then we're done, right? So it's whatever that house has. Now what if we have two houses? That becomes a little bit more interesting, but it's still pretty simple. If house one has more money, we rob house one. Or if house two has more money, we rob house two. And now this is where it gets into the super interesting case. So the third case is when we have three houses, right? One, two, and three. So do we rob the second house or the first and the third, right? So how are we actually gonna determine what we rob and why? Um, and so this is basically called bottom-up processing. And so this is a dynamic programming question, and the way we're going to solve this is, is called by using something called dynamic... <laughs> the way we're going to solve this is using something called bottom-up processing, which is common in dynamic programming. And the idea here is that if we're asking for the answer to the nth thing, we can solve a subproblem that's smaller, say the ith thing, first. And that will actually help us get us to the nth answer. So we're gonna do it the way we just said. How much money can we get from robbing zero houses, from one, from five, from a million, so on and so forth. So let's go through those cases now, right? So we said if nums is null or nums.length is zero. So again, this is the case where we have no houses. We can't actually make any money. So we would return zero. And now if we have one house, so if nums.length equals one, we would just rob that one house. So return nums zero. Now, if we have two houses, so if nums.length equals two, that's not the right syntax, then we would return the max of the two, right? So return math.max of nums zero and nums one. Okay, so those are gonna take care of smaller cases, right? And so now we need to begin building towards bigger cases, but these will actually still hold, right? So we're gonna make a dynamic programming array now and dp of i is gonna represent the maximum amount of money that we can rob up to the ith house. So we're gonna say int dp equals new int nums.length. And now we said, okay, the amount of money that we can rob up to the first house, right? So dp of zero, which is really, it's, a, it's off by one, but in this case, we're really just saying the amount of houses or the amount of money that we can rob up to the zeroth house in this case, it's kind of including it, would be nums of zero, right? So again, the, the maximum amount of money that we can rob up to the zeroth house is just robbing that house. So it's num zero, dp of one now, right? So the amount of money that we can rob up to the first house, 
house, and this, again, this is zero based indexing, would be the maximum of the zeroth house and the first house. So we'd say math.max num0 and nums1. Awesome. So now we're gonna use our kind of formula that we said before for that interesting case, right? For the interesting case, if we're at the third house, are we gonna to choose to rob the third house and the first house, or are we gonna rob the second house, right? The amount of money, the most amount of money we can make up to that second house. And that's kind of how we're gonna try and formulate this. So we're gonna say four int i equals two, because we've already solved it for zero and one here. Well, i is less than dp dot length, i plus plus. And now we said we wanna ask that question, right? So we wanna say, dp of i is going to be equal to what? And we said, well, it's gonna be equal to math.max, right, of robbing the current house, so robbing nums i, plus whatever we can get, right, the maximum up to i minus two. So again, dp is gonna represent the maximum amount of money that we can get up to, in this case, i minus two, because we don't wanna trigger the police, right, or alert the police. So dp of i is gonna be the maximum of this calculation, robbing the current house, plus the maximum amount of money we can get from the previous uh, two houses ago, or it's going to be just, sorry, just, right, taking whatever the previous amount, maximum amount of money was up to the previous house. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It's a little confusing, but that's generally the idea is either we can rob the first and the third, or we're just gonna take the maximum amount of money up to that one in between. And so now at the end of this, guys, all we really have to do is again, return that maximum, right? And in this case, we wanna know for n houses or for nums.length, right, minus one because that's how many houses we have. So we can just return dp of that. So we would say return dp nums.length minus one. And again, that will store the maximum amount of money to rob all of those houses without setting off the alert systems or the alarm systems. Awesome, and it works. So guys, this is how to solve house robber in Java. This is a frequently asked question at Google. If you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.